Hello, cool guy tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Lufia 2 with me, Blue Ankylo. Also, hello to Zencape for joining the stream. So last episode, we cleared the tower and rescued Hilda, and Guy joined our party pretty much forever, the way I remember it. Um, while we've got our Guy, we should perhaps check the equipment store. See if it's anything worth picking up. So, we could get better knives. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Thunder Blast is better or worse than Ice Attack in average. I mean, just in straight up how much damage it deals, it's better. So I guess that's enough. Um, it is about 10 more damage. That's probably worth it. We've got lots of money, so even though we'll probably find a better weapon in the next town anyway, in that case, I probably shouldn't be buying them, but it's fine. And I'm gonna sell the old weapons, even though technically I could try feeding them to our uh, monster. I think it requires um, like a certain a certain value in its weapons, and I forget the exact number. I think it was 500 gold minimum to improve the uh, the 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 experience, the evolution for the uh, the new guy. For Foamy, that is. Alright, any armor we should buy? I'll, I'll give Tia some more armor because she's a little bit low. Her defense is, like, the weakest on the team. I'll definitely buy the Hide Helmet for Guy because that's a pretty big upgrade. And I, I think, actually, although we lose a little bit of magic damage here, um, the bracelet has a very nice uh, battle sort of uh, limit break type thing. Like, that uh, increased defense power is pretty good for a boss fighting buff, so I think we'll go with that as well. And I'm not going to worry too much about buying absolutely everything. I wonder if I should hold on to that and give it to somebody else. Let me double check. Oh right, it's a yeah, it's a shield. So it makes more it's it's weird. It says power. Oh, it's actually I didn't even think of that. Spell repel is magic resistance, which is also we just we haven't been fighting a lot of magic monsters yet. Um it might be a worth... Actually, I'm not going to sell it. So, basically, Tia can increase your defense power or your magic defense power with the same slot. So, depending on what you're fighting, you might want to switch that out, actually. Alright. Yeah, that one, that one tricked me a little bit. Okay. Now, if our capsule monster needs swords to get stronger... I wish I knew exactly how much value sword he needed, like, uh... Also, thank you for the, uh... Whatever you call it, the donation. I appreciate that. Hopefully that gives us some better equipment. I, I, I agree, that's great. I'm, I'm curious... The first tier was 200, right? I'm actually... Okay, I'm just gonna put a save down because I'm gonna waste some money here. Uh, let's use... Are, I think we can warp outside of town. So what I wanted to do is check at the previous couple towns, which honestly you could walk to in about five seconds, if there was a sword for about 500 Gs, and then if that actually gives us uh, experience, you know what I mean, uh, evolution points. Six hundred still more. I, I think five hundred is is the break point. I think. All the way back to Sundeltan. And I might be crazy. This might not work. Come on, where's there's a shot. Alright, so we can... <laughs> there's nothing for 500 on the dot. <laughs> That'll show me. 
So I guess the best we can do is maybe go for a 600. Sure wish I had the warp spell. That'd be convenient here, wouldn't it? All right, we'll go to a loons. I'll buy something for 600 and I'll test it out. Here's to blue Ankylo messing around. All right, so the cheapest will be something like a mace. I'll buy one and just buy it. All right, so now if we go to our capsule, feed him one weapon that's 600 gold, we do not get any points. So does that mean it's going to be a 1,000 minimum, or does it actually need to be, like, not a mace, but, like, a knife? So, like, what about a long knife? That's 800. I just want to see what the cheapest weapon will be. Still a negative, wow. So do you think it's gone all the way up to a thousand gold minimum? That would be a shame. Okay, so 900, so I wasted a whole bunch of money, so that's why I had the save state, just because it's, it's just for experimentation. So if I try something that's over a thousand, will that work? Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing it's either, you know, 1,200 or 1,000, something like that. Um, that's going to cost a lot of money to actually get him another level up. And halfway to evolving doesn't do anything. So, if that's... I don't think we've ever counted, but it's like 30 or so growth points, I think. So that means we need about 30,000 spare gold to level him up. Um, no, Crypt Lord, the only games I've done have been kind of on my spare time for side projects, basically. Generally not a huge fan of the game dev, uh, mentality at most studios. They don't... it's just a different way. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in, I wish you... I wish you luck. It won't always be terrible, but a lot of them are. Guts is how fast your IP gauge grows. That's nice. Um, but anyway, yeah, so what I wanted to see was how much money we'd need, so if we need 1,000 gold value weapons and we need about 30 of them, we're still, well, we're about halfway to enough gold. Uh, we just finished Subnautica, uh, at the beginning of the stream, and Lufia 2, we're still really close to the beginning, actually. Uh, if I put a save down, well, you can see. We've only gotten four hours into this game so far. We're still pretty early. <laughs> Good for you, Crypt Lord. Uh, not, not all game studios are terrible, but they have a, a poor reputation in general. Well, especially where I live. I live in uh, Vancouver where there's a big EA Sports branch, so... EA, the, uh, the company that was voted worst place to work at, like, two years in a row or something. All right, <clears throat> so the goal here, we could just travel through the uh, dungeon really fast and go to the next town, but <laughs> EA is basically Voldemort, yeah. Um, we know that at the top of the tower in the boss room, there was some treasure chests, and it's totally worth going to pick those up, even if we could just skip it and go to the next town. So let's just do a little quick backtrack here. I guess I'll have to redo these puzzles. Oh. You've got to go pretty far back in time for EA to be the best. <laughs> That's a long time ago. The red jellies, the red slimes, they are the weakest enemies in the game. That is true. Uh, blue and green are a little bit stronger. Although, not that much.
I guess if I get 30,000 gold here, I might try to upgrade my, uh, my Fomi again. I guess I like the combat in this game. It might not be the most exciting, but, uh, I don't mind doing a couple quick battles as we run back up top. We'll just use the, uh, the escape to get out of the, t like, we're not gonna have to fight our way up and down. Once we get to the top, we'll just teleport out, so. It is, uh, it's a nice, um, mixture of kind of Final Fantasy VI style combat and a little bit of, uh, sort of Zelda dungeoneering, basically. Dungeon exploring. Puzzles. There's lots more puzzles and stuff, too. And I always like getting lots of level ups. The general experience curve for this game is pretty generous. So you don't need a ton of grinding, you get your level ups pretty fast, which definitely helps. Uh, I guess the question is, I forgot to check. Sorry, backtracking again. I actually don't know if I need to do all the side puzzles. In fact, I'm almost certain that we will. We'll I don't think it saves puzzle solutions um, after leaving the dungeon and returning, so... I probably should just plan on resolving the whole thing, other than the key, basically. Uh, so Jirao, as far as I understand it, if you feed it the weapon it asks for exactly, you will always get, I think, two points of growth or maybe three points of growth. If you feed it the type it's asking for, so if it's asking for a weapon and you feed it a weapon, it has a minimum value for each evolution. The first one was like 200, the second one's probably 1,000, and then like maybe 5,000, 10,000. Um, and as long as you feed it the minimum, you'll get one point. And if you feed it something really high, like if we were still a level one, uh, like the, the level one Fomi, if you fed it like a 5,000 gold sword, it would probably get you like three or four points. So it's kind of a, a scaling system. Sure, I wouldn't mind knowing what the minimum value thresholds were, Jirao. If you happen to pick up, like, level 2 evolutions always need X amount of gold minimum uh, weapons, that would be kind of useful. But other than that, I think I remember the basics. Gotta beat up some Krabbies again. And yes, I did need to flick the switches again, so I went the right direction at least, that's good. Glad I'm not redoing the same puzzles for no reason. What's my deciding factor? Um, honestly, I sort of wing it. <laughs> um, streaming is sort of a... If I've got the time at a... Like, for, for streaming, I like to do it at the right time of the day. Like, if I record it at the middle of the night, or sorry, if I stream at the middle of the night my time, there's very few time zones that could join in. So I only stream games when I've got sort of blocks of time where other people can join in to watch, basically. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh, right, right, right. This way first. Um, and because it's... Well, it's just kind of a different, more casual style of recording. Like, um, streaming tends to help just with casual games where I'm just chalking with the audience while we're playing through it. I like to record um, 
just without the streams for games that are a bit more... Maybe I'm a bit more serious about. So, like, if there's a game that comes out that I really want to make a Let's Play for, and it's maybe got a serious storyline or something that I really want to show off, I probably wouldn't stream it just so I can talk more about the game. Whereas, like, for this one, I can spend lots of time just chatting with you guys while we kind of zip through it. Also, if we're doing, like, Final Fantasy 1 solo challenges, those make much better streams for me because a lot of it's just grinding. And it's nice to have someone to talk to while we're grinding. <laughs> Rather than, oh, let's fight our 500th goblin today. So I know I bought these fancy, uh... <laughs> I bought this fancy cookery last time. Uh, and then I immediately got an upgrade for it. So... Yeah, that's pretty standard. I think I'll give it to Maxim because his attack power is a little bit weaker. And then we also picked up a Pearl Brace. Which gives us intelligence. Ooh, so this is like an offensive buff during combat. Or during bosses. So Tia could use this to um, to increase her magic damage at the end of, uh, during combat. So that's probably worth it. Was there anything else we picked up? Camu armor. Right, so the boss's name was Camu, I think. And now we can get his armor. And I think only Guy can equip it, right? So he gets a pretty nice upgrade. Levels 2 to 3 seem to be a bit expensive. Oh, Apple Cider. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I, I was always thinking in terms of weapons. If Apple Cider is 1,000 gold, then it probably just hits that minimum. Because the weapons are like... Uh, the weapons are... don't... There's no weapon that is exactly... Uh, 1,000. Like, it's 1,200 minimum kind of thing. I actually did stream Might and Magic 6. The original was um, not streamed. Like, the first time I Let's Played Might and Magic 6 was a normal Let's Play. But I did do a revisit that was streamed just to sort of have some fun kind of thing. So, I've actually done both for that one. Fruit gives it 8 bars. I don't think we have any fruit. I can check, but I don't think we've got any. Well, these new weapons are doing a ton of damage. The fire dagger must do, like, fire ele elemental. So, like, it hits really hard on enemies that are weak to fire. Like, that's great. That was a really good weapon. Solo knight. Oh, that'd be so boring. <laughs> I gotta say, solo challenges for Might and Magic 6, like, I'm not excited about that at all. That sounds really boring. It's worse for long games, like, the quicker I can get through it, or the more saves, the more um, fast forward super speed we can do, the more likely I'll, I'll do a solo challenge. If it's gonna take, like, hundreds of hours of grinding, then I just, I don't have the time for that, unfortunately. Alright, um, so if... If the cheapest... Yeah, we've, we've got to get past the tower. Um, if the cheapest... Oh, come on. If the cheapest way to upgrade your foamy is 1,000 gold times about 30, um, we still don't have enough money for it, and I don't want to rush it too much. We don't need a level 3 foamy right now. Uh, I mean, it'd be nice, but we don't need it. But we can go back to Sandleton anytime and buy the tea, if that's a good strategy. Or the apple cider, whatever it's called. So let's forget about that for now, and let's just go to the next town. One thing that probably would be useful... Um... Would be to get more eagle rocks, actually. You could probably farm a bunch of uh, random encounters in this field until we got enough eagles that everyone had an eagle rock because that's a, an equipment slot that we don't have any items for yet. And I think the eagle rock is the only, like, the earliest one you can get. Just from, like, memory. But I'm not going to do that either. So let's go to the next town.
Oh, 32. There's 32 slots rather than 30. Yeah, that's fair. Fire Emblem games. So I've done all the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems. I'll probably do the GameCube ones at some point. Or the one for GameCube at some point. After that, I don't know. I don't really have an easy way to record the 3DS ones, so that's not terribly likely at the moment. But Path of Radiance was pretty awesome. We are just ripping it up here. Yeah, no, I, I definitely I definitely enjoyed Path of Radiance. That was Well, it wasn't the first Fire Emblem game I played, but it was definitely one of my first. It was probably my third, I guess, technically. Unfortunately, I never really got into the sequel to Path of Radiance on the Wii. That one, I just never, that was too hard. <laughs> hey, we made it to Clemento, and unfortunately, Zen, no, this guy is a different guy. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, luckily after the tower exploded, sort of, the, uh, the, the pa- it, the tower didn't collapse, and we were able to go through it to the next town. Ooh, the rumor of the ruby apple. No, tell me more. Alright, so we got another gem finding quest. Oh, yeah, Path of Radiance is, um, the GameCube one with Ike, and the sequel was on the Wii, and it's, it's just weird. It's the same game, but it's way harder. It's the same style of game, like, it's, it's very similar to Path of Radiance, it's just, they up the difficulty tremendously. Alright, let's see if we got anything to buy. We got a rod. Eh, who cares? We got a baggie. Doesn't do anything. Red beret. Lowers enemy resistance to magic. That's an interesting combo. You increase your intelligence and then reduce the enemy's magic resistance. That's... That could work on bosses. Honestly, there's not much to buy here. You get a bigger helmet. Eh, might as well. I figure I've got the money, might as well spend it, right? I should probably feed the cookery to the, uh, to the monster. Oh, the jet helm is actually kind of good. Well, how much de defense are we talking here? Well, four agility isn't worth very much. There's probably some argument to hold on to the Jet Helm, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. Oh, we do have a secret fruit down here. Look at that. But whenever I'm... Instead of selling... If I know it's something that will upgrade his, uh, his growth by one, I should feed it to him rather than selling it. And that way we'll get some passive growth, at least. Rochi! It's not old man Rochi, though. Not the Turtle Sage. Richest and stingiest! Okay. One thing I remember about Lufia, too, is... The um, towns are a little bit generic and samey, like they always have the same kind of palette. So it gets a little bit hard to tell the difference between all the different uh, uh, Lufia 2 towns. I'll, I will say that.
All right, we got a fancy glass worker. Welcome to the magic house. Want to learn some magic, kids? Uh, bravery sounds pretty good, actually. Another debuff. Or cleanse, I guess, is probably the name. Oh, there we go. Now we can just use the escape spell. That's really nice. That's a convenient spell, for sure. Alright, so, let's go check the uh, glass worker's house. So... Okay. Th this, this game seems to like the, the quests revolving gems and royal... Royal... Royal jewelry. <laughs> ah, we just own the entire town. Those get smacked down. That's why we we spend the money on mercenaries to beat up poor the poor old men and women who can't afford to pay us our rent. All right, richest man in the village. No. Well, you're going to have to pay us then, richest and stingiest man of the village. Whatever you ask. Okay. One million gold. <laughs> yeah, whoops. So who's getting the feeling that instead of getting our reward... We're just going to use it to pay off the, 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 the glass shop's debt. Ha 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 ha! How embarrassing! Ha 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 Well, I ask for all your money. One million gold. So, are we supposed to go talk to the glass worker's house, maybe? Did your son move out and now you can't pay rent? Is that the problem? Or did I like miss the... Oh, this is the right one. There we go. I just kept missing the... This is the glass making house. Glass crafter. Too bad you're gonna get evicted before he returns home. Yeah. I guess we better buy something or else she's gonna get kicked out, right? Could buy a glass ring. If, uh, if foamies like those, that would be exactly 1,000 Gs. Ah, uh, Confuse is not very good. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, glass workers. Your, your, your selection is just not good enough. I guess you're gonna get kicked out, sorry. Blame your husband. He seeks beautiful things, then boils them into glass to make them beautiful forever. Oh. Yeah, that'd be a dark twist. Okay. Let's have a quick look around. I'll probably save the next dungeon for the next episode, though. So this will be the next cave, right? Ruby Cave! Okay, good. What else is around here? Some crabs. Just a few crabbies. Yeah, inf trying to inflict statuses on enemies is just a waste of time in most RPGs. <laughs> Unless you already know, like, all the enemy weaknesses ahead of time. So this would be the next shrine. Right, and Rochi won't let us through. And I bet you it will cost exactly as much money as he pays us 
for the ruby ring to get through there. Well, sure. <sighs> Status is... Like, okay, classically in Final Fantasy, slow tends to work most of the time. But when we're talking about stuff like poison, confusion, paralysis, most classic RPGs, they just... Most enemies are just immune to them all. Um, in Dungeons & Dragons... I guess it depends. I bet you players spend more time researching their enemies, so you know sort of what uh, what saving throw they use to protect against it. There's less, like, straight up, all these enemies are just immune to paralysis in those kind of games as there are in, like, Final Fantasies, for instance. It's very common to run into a bunch of enemies in these kind of RPGs where they're just immune to confusion, so it will never do anything. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm going to end our YouTube episode here, for the future. And like, I did, during my uh, Pools of Radiance series, uh, I totally used a bunch of status spells on those games, when it was appropriate. Um, but yeah, they tend to be really early on. Once you're dealing with high level enemies, they do tend to have really good saving throws. I don't think I abused them. <laughs> it's just sleep worked in 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 first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Sleep was really good at putting one die HP creatures to sleep. So if you're fighting a bunch of kobolds that have no HP, sleep will put a whole huge group of them to sleep instantly. And then because they're helpless in first edition Dungeons and Dragons rules, Anything that's helpless gets killed in one shot if you hit it with a melee attack, or any physical attack, really. So that was pretty broken. <laughs> and we may have done that a little bit. Alright, let's end this episode here. So for those of you watching along on the videos, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Uh, have a great day and all that.